Historiography is the study of the methods of historians in developing history as an academic discipline, and by extension as any body of historical work on a particular subject. The historiography of a specific topic covers how historians have studied that topic using particular sources, techniques, and theoretical approaches. Scholars discuss historiography by topic, such as the historiography of the United Kingdom, the historiography of Canada, historiography of the British Empire, the historiography of early Islam, the historiography of China, and different approaches and genres, such as political history and social history. Beginning in the 19th century, with the ascent of academic history, there developed a body of historiographic literature. The extent to which historians are influenced by their own groups and loyalties, such as to their nation state, is a debated question. The research interests of historians change over time, and there has been a shift away from traditional diplomatic, economic, and political history toward newer approaches, especially social and cultural studies. From 1975 to 1995, the proportion of professors of history in American universities identifying with social history increased from 31 to 41 percent, while the proportion of political historians decreased from 40 to 30 percent. In 2007, of 5,723 faculty in the Departments of History at British Universities, 1,644 identified themselves with social history and 1,425 identified themselves with political history. Terminology <inaudible> 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 In the early modern period, the term historiography meant the writing of history, and historiographer meant historian. In that sense certain official historians were given the title historiographer royal in Sweden from 1618, England from 1660, and Scotland from 1681. The Scottish Post is still in existence. Historiography was more recently defined as the study of the way history has been and is written, the history of historical writing, which means that, when you study historiography, you do not study the events of the past directly, but the changing interpretations of those events in the works of individual historians. <laughs> Antiquity Understanding the past appears to be a universal human need, and the telling of history," has emerged independently in civilizations around the world. What constitutes history is a philosophical question see philosophy of history. The earliest chronologies date back to Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt, though no historical writers in these early civilizations were known by name. By contrast, the term, historiography, is taken to refer to written history recorded in a narrative format for the purpose of informing future generations about events. In this limited sense, ancient history begins with the early historiography of classical antiquity, in about the 5th century BCE. <inaudible> East Asia <inaudible> <inaudible> China One of the Confucian Five Classics, the Shang Shu Shang Shu, has conventionally been given the English title Classic of History. This terminology is misleading as the book is a collection of speeches and anecdotes about ancient worthies, which while arranged in rough chronological order lacks any attempt to integrate them into a coherent narrative or indicate exactly how much time has passed between two incidents. The purpose of the book is less about recording history and more about imparting moral lessons. The first true history of China is therefore the Spring and Autumn Annals, the official chronicle of the state of Lu covering the period from 722 to 481 BCE. It is among the earliest surviving historical texts to be arranged on annalistic principles in the world, and was traditionally attributed to Confucius 551 to 479 BCE. A. Commentary on the spring and autumn, the Zuo Zuan attributed to Zuo Chuming in the 5th century BCE, is considered the earliest work of narrative history in the world, covering the period from 722 to 468 BCE. 
It is many times longer and much more detailed and vivid than the laconic text it is purportedly commenting on, so that it is commonly regarded as a work of history in its own right, just as the spring and autumn annals has lent their name to the spring and autumn period they cover. The following Warring States period is named after the book Intrigues of the Warring States, compiled between the 3rd and 1st centuries BCE. Unlike the annals, the intrigues lack any chronological apparatus and is more of a return to the editorial style of the classic of history. The purpose of the work is rather to teach the reader useful diplomatic and strategic skills rather than provide a coherent narrative of the period. The Han dynasty eunuch Sima Qian around 100 BCE was the first in China to lay the groundwork for professional historical writing. His written work was the Shiji Records of the Grand Historian, a monumental lifelong achievement in literature. Its scope extends as far back as the 16th century BCE, and it includes many treatises on specific subjects and individual biographies of prominent people, and also explores the lives and deeds of commoners, both contemporary and those of previous eras. His work pioneered the «Annals Biography» format, which would become the standard for prestige history writing in China. In this genre a history opens with a chronological outline of court affairs, and then continues with detailed biographies of prominent people who lived during the period in question, whereas Sima's had been a universal history from the beginning of time down to the time of writing, his successor Ban Gu wrote an annals biography history limiting its coverage to only the Western Han dynasty, the Book of Han 96 CE. This established the notion of using dynastic boundaries as start and end points, and most later Chinese histories would focus on a single dynasty or group of dynasties. The records of the Grand Historian and Book of Han were eventually joined by the Book of the Later Han 488 CE, replacing the earlier, and now only partially extant, Han records from the Eastern Pavilion and the records of the Three Kingdoms 297 CE to form the Four Histories. These became mandatory reading for the imperial examinations and have therefore exerted an influence on Chinese culture comparable to the Confucian classics. More annals biography histories were written in subsequent dynasties, eventually bringing the number to between 24 and 26, but none ever reached the popularity and impact of the first four. Traditional Chinese historiography describes history in terms of dynastic cycles. In this view, each new dynasty is founded by a morally righteous founder. Over time, the dynasty becomes morally corrupt and dissolute. Eventually, the dynasty becomes so weak as to allow its replacement by a new dynasty. In 281 CE, the tomb of King Shang of Wei, d. 296 BC, was opened, inside of which was found a historical text called the Bamboo Annals, after the writing material. It is similar in style to the Spring and Autumn Annals and covers the time from the Yellow Emperor to 299 BC. Opinions on the authenticity of the text has varied throughout the centuries, and in any event it was rediscovered too late to gain anything like the same status as the spring and autumn. Europe Greece The earliest known systematic historical thought emerged in ancient Greece, a development which would be an important influence on the writing of history elsewhere around the Mediterranean region. Greek historians greatly contributed to the development of historical methodology. The earliest known critical historical works were the histories, composed by Herodotus of Halicarnassus 484 BCE, who became known as the father of history. Herodotus attempted to distinguish between more and less reliable accounts, and personally conducted research by traveling extensively, giving written accounts of various Mediterranean cultures. Although Herodotus' overall emphasis lay on the actions and characters of men, he also attributed an important role to divinity in the determination of historical events. The generation following Herodotus witnessed a spate of local histories of the individual city-states polis, written by the first of the local historians who employed the written archives of city and sanctuary. Dionysus of Halicarnassus characterized these historians as the forerunners of Thucydides, and these local histories continued to be written into late antiquity, as long as the city-states survived. Two early figures stand out, Hippias of Elis, who produced the lists of winners in the Olympic Games that provided the basic chronological framework as long as the pagan classical tradition lasted, and Hellenicus of Lesbos, who compiled more than two dozen histories from civic records, all of them now lost. 
Thucydides largely eliminated divine causality in his account of the war between Athens and Sparta, establishing a rationalistic element which set a precedent for subsequent Western historical writings. He was also the first to distinguish between cause and immediate origins of an event, while his successor Xenophon c. BCE introduced autobiographical elements and character studies in his Anabasis. The proverbial Philippic attacks of the Athenian orator Demosthenes BCE on Philip II of Macedon marked the height of ancient political agitation. The now lost history of Alexander's campaigns by the Deodic Ptolemy I 367 to 283 BCE may represent the first historical work composed by a ruler. Polybius c. 203 BCE wrote on the rise of Rome to world prominence, and attempted to harmonize the Greek and Roman points of view. The Chaldean priest Barassus Florida, 3rd century BCE composed a Greek-language history of Babylonia for the Seleucid king Antiochus I, combining Hellenistic methods of historiography and Mesopotamian accounts to form a unique composite. Reports exist of other Near Eastern histories, such as that of the Phoenician historian Sanchuniathon, but he is considered semi-legendary and writings attributed to him are fragmentary, known only through the later historians Philo of Byblos and Eusebius, who asserted that he wrote before even the Trojan War. <laughs> Rome The Romans adopted the Greek tradition, writing at first in Greek, but eventually chronicling their history in a freshly non-Greek language. While early Roman works were still written in Greek, the Origines, composed by the Roman statesman Cato the Elder 234 BCE, was written in Latin, in a conscious effort to counteract Greek cultural influence. It marked the beginning of Latin historical writings. Hailed for its lucid style, Julius Caesar's 100 to 44 BCE De Bello Gallico exemplifies autobiographical war coverage. The politician and orator Cicero 106 to 43 BCE introduced rhetorical elements in his political writings. Strabo 63 BCE c. 24 CE was an important exponent of the Greco-Roman tradition of combining geography with history, presenting a descriptive history of peoples and places known to his era. Livy 59 BCE to 17 CE records the rise of Rome from city-state to empire. His speculation about what would have happened if Alexander the Great had marched against Rome represents the first known instance of alternate history. Biography, although popular throughout antiquity, was introduced as a branch of history by the works of Plutarch, c. 46127 CE, and Suetonius, c. 69 after 130 CE, who described the deeds and characters of ancient personalities, stressing their human side. Tacitus c. 56 c. 117 CE denounces Roman immorality by praising German virtues, elaborating on the topos of the noble savage. <inaudible> <inaudible> Middle Ages to Renaissance <inaudible> <inaudible> Christendom Christian historiography began early, perhaps as early as Luke Acts, which is the primary source for the Apostolic Age, though its historical reliability is disputed. In the first Christian centuries, the New Testament canon was developed. The growth of Christianity and its enhanced status in the Roman Empire after Constantine I see State Church of the Roman Empire led to the development of a distinct Christian historiography, influenced by both Christian theology and the nature of the Christian Bible, encompassing new areas of study and views of history. The central role of the Bible in Christianity is reflected in the preference of Christian historians for written sources, compared to the classical historian's preference for oral sources and is also reflected in the inclusion of politically unimportant people. Christian historians also focused on development of religion and society. This can be seen in the extensive inclusion of written sources in the ecclesiastical history written by Eusebius of Caesarea around 324 and in the subjects it covers. Christian theology considered time as linear, progressing according to divine plan. As God's plan encompassed everyone, Christian histories in this period had a universal approach. For example, Christian writers often included summaries of important historical events prior to the period covered by the work. Writing history was popular among Christian monks and clergy in the Middle Ages. They wrote about the history of Jesus Christ, that of the Church, and that of their patrons, the dynastic history of the local rulers. 
In the early Middle Ages historical writing often took the form of annals or chronicles recording events year by year, but this style tended to hamper the analysis of events and causes. An example of this type of writing is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which was the work of several different writers. It was started during the reign of Alfred the Great in the late 9th century, but one copy was still being updated in 1154. Some writers in the period did construct a more narrative form of history. These included Gregory of Tours and more successfully Bede, who wrote both secular and ecclesiastical history and who is known for writing the ecclesiastical history of the English people. During the Renaissance, history was written about states or nations. The study of history changed during the Enlightenment and Romanticism. Voltaire described the history of certain ages that he considered important, rather than describing events in chronological order. History became an independent discipline. It was not called Philosophia Historiae anymore, but merely History Historia. Topic: <inaudible> Islamic World. Muslim historical writings first began to develop in the 7th century, with the reconstruction of the Prophet Muhammad's life in the centuries following his death. With numerous conflicting narratives regarding Muhammad and his companions from various sources, it was necessary to verify which sources were more reliable. In order to evaluate these sources, various methodologies were developed, such as the science of biography, science of hadith, and isnad, chain of transmission. These methodologies were later applied to other historical figures in the Islamic civilization. Famous historians in this tradition include Urwa d. 712, Wahb ibn Munabi d. 728, Ibn Ishaq d. 761, Al-Waqidi 745 to 822, Ibn Hisham d. 834, Muhammad al-Bukhari 810 to 870, and Ibn Hajar 1372 to 1449. Historians of the medieval Islamic world also developed an interest in world history. Islamic historical writing eventually culminated in the works of the Arab Muslim historian Ibn Khaldun (1332–1406), who published his historiographical studies in the Muqaddimah, translated as Prolegomena, and Kitab al-Ibah, Book of Advice. His work was forgotten until it was rediscovered in the late 19th century. Topic: <laughs> East Asia. Topic: <laughs> Japan. The earliest works of history produced in Japan were the Rikokushi, a corpus of six national histories covering the history of Japan from its mythological beginnings until the 9th century. The first of these works were the Nihon Shoki, compiled by Prince Taneri in 720. Topic. Korea The tradition of Korean historiography was established with the Samguk Sagi, a history of Korea from its allegedly earliest times. It was compiled by Goryeo court historian Kim Busuk after its commission by King Injong of Goryeo R. It was completed in 1145 and relied not only on earlier Chinese histories for source material, but also on the Warong Segi written by the Silla historian Kim Diamond in the 8th century. The latter work is now lost. Topic: China. In 1084, the Song Dynasty official Sima Guang completed the Comprehensive Mirror to Aid in Government, which laid out the entire history of China from the beginning of the Warring States period (403 BCE) to the end of the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period (Five Dynasties period, 959 CE) in chronological annals form, rather than in the traditional annals biography form. This work is considered much more accessible than the official histories. For the Six Dynasties, Tang Dynasty, and Five Dynasties, and in practice superseded those works in the mind of the general reader. The great Song Neo Confucian Zhu Xi found the mirror to be overly long for the average reader, as well as to too morally nihilist, and therefore prepared a didactic summary of it called the Digest of the Comprehensive Mirror to Aid in Government, posthumously published in 1219. It reduced the original's 249 chapters to just 59, and for the rest of imperial Chinese history would be the first history book most people ever read. Enlightenment 
During the Age of Enlightenment, the modern development of historiography through the application of scrupulous methods began. Among the many Italians who contributed to this were Leonardo Bruni c. 1370–1444, Francesco Guicciardini 1483–1540, and Cesare Baronio 1538–1607. Voltaire French philosophy Voltaire had an enormous influence on the development of historiography during the Age of Enlightenment through his demonstration of fresh new ways to look at the past. Guillaume de Sion argues, Voltaire recast historiography in both factual and analytical terms. Not only did he reject traditional biographies and accounts that claim the work of supernatural forces, but he went so far as to suggest that earlier historiography was rife with falsified evidence and required new investigations at the source. Such an outlook was not unique in that the scientific spirit that 18th-century intellectuals perceived themselves as invested with. A rationalistic approach was key to rewriting history. Voltaire's best known histories are The Age of Louis XIV, 1751, and his essay on the customs and the spirit of the nations. 1756. He broke from the tradition of narrating diplomatic and military events, and emphasized customs, social history, and achievements in the arts and sciences. He was the first scholar to make a serious attempt to write the history of the world, eliminating theological frameworks, and emphasizing economics, culture and political history. Although he repeatedly warned against political bias on the part of the historian, he did not miss many opportunities to expose the intolerance and frauds of the Church over the ages. Voltaire advised scholars that anything contradicting the normal course of nature was not to be believed. Although he found evil in the historical record, he fervently believed reason and educating the illiterate masses would lead to progress. Voltaire explains his view of historiography in his article on History in Diderot's Encyclopédie. One demands of modern historians more details, better ascertained facts, precise dates, more attention to customs, laws, mores, commerce, finance, agriculture, population. Already in 1739 he had written, "...my chief object is not political or military history, it is the history of the arts, of commerce, of civilization, in a word, of the human mind." Voltaire's histories used the values of the Enlightenment to evaluate the past. He helped free historiography from antiquarianism, Eurocentrism, religious intolerance and a concentration on great men, diplomacy, and warfare. Peter Gay says Voltaire wrote, very good history, citing his scrupulous concern for truths, careful sifting of evidence, intelligent selection of what is important, keen sense of drama, and grasp of the fact that a whole civilization is a unit of study. Topic: <laughs> David Hume. At the same time, philosopher David Hume was having a similar effect on the study of history in Great Britain. In 1754 he published The History of England, a six-volume work which extended, "...from the invasion of Julius Caesar to the Revolution in 1688." Hume adopted a similar scope to Voltaire in his history, as well as the history of kings, parliaments, and armies. He examined the history of culture, including literature and science, as well. His short biographies of leading scientists explored the process of scientific change and he developed new ways of seeing scientists in the context of their times by looking at how they interacted with society and each other. He paid special attention to Francis Bacon, Robert Boyle, Isaac Newton and William Harvey. He also argued that the quest for liberty was the highest standard for judging the past, and concluded that after considerable fluctuation, England at the time of his writing had achieved the most entire system of liberty, that was ever known amongst mankind. <inaudible> Edward Gibbon The apex of Enlightenment history was reached with Edward Gibbon's monumental six-volume work, The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, published on 17 February 1776. Because of its relative objectivity and heavy use of primary sources, its methodology became a model for later historians. This has led to Gibbon being called the first modern historian. The book sold impressively, earning its author a total of about £9,000. Biographer Leslie Stephen wrote that thereafter, 
His fame was as rapid as it has been lasting. Gibbon's work has been praised for its style, its piquant epigrams and its effective irony. Winston Churchill memorably noted, I set out upon Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire and was immediately dominated both by the story and the style. I devoured Gibbon. I rode triumphantly through it from end to end and enjoyed it all. Gibbon was pivotal in the secularizing and desanctifying of history, remarking, for example, on the want of truth and common sense of biographies composed by St. Jerome. Unusually for an 18th-century historian, Gibbon was never content with second-hand accounts when the primary sources were accessible though most of these were drawn from well-known printed editions. I have always endeavored, he says, to draw from the fountain head, that my curiosity, as well as a sense of duty, has always urged me to study the originals, and that, if they have sometimes eluded my search, I have carefully marked the secondary evidence, on whose faith a passage or a fact were reduced to depend. In this insistence upon the importance of primary sources, Gibbon broke new ground in the methodical study of history. In accuracy, thoroughness, lucidity, and comprehensive grasp of a vast subject, the history is unsurpassable. It is the one English history which may be regarded as definitive. Whatever its shortcomings the book is artistically imposing as well as historically unimpeachable as a vast panorama of a great period. 19th century The tumultuous events surrounding the French Revolution inspired much of the historiography and analysis of the early 19th century. Interest in the 1688 Glorious Revolution was also rekindled by the Great Reform Act of 1832 in England. Thomas Carlyle Thomas Carlyle published his three-volume The French Revolution, A History, in 1837. The first volume was accidentally burned by John Stuart Mill's maid. Carlyle rewrote it from scratch. Carlyle's style of historical writing stressed the immediacy of action, often using the present tense. He emphasized the role of forces of the spirit in history and thought that chaotic events demanded what he called heroes to take control over the competing forces erupting within society. He considered the dynamic forces of history as being the hopes and aspirations of people that took the form of ideas, and were often ossified into ideologies. Carlyle's The French Revolution was written in a highly unorthodox style, far removed from the neutral and detached tone of the tradition of Gibbon. Carlyle presented the history as dramatic events unfolding in the present as though he and the reader were participants on the streets of Paris at the famous events. Carlyle's invented style was epic poetry combined with philosophical treatise. It is rarely read or cited in the last century. <inaudible> <inaudible> French historians, Michelet and Taine In his main work Histoire de France 1855, French historian Jules Michelet coined the term Renaissance meaning rebirth. In French, as a period in Europe's cultural history that represented a break from the Middle Ages, creating a modern understanding of humanity and its place in the world. The 19-volume work covered French history from Charlemagne to the outbreak of the French Revolution. His inquiry into manuscript and printed authorities was most laborious, but his lively imagination, and his strong religious and political prejudices, made him regard all things from a singularly personal point of view. Michelet was one of the first historians to shift the emphasis of history to the common people, rather than the leaders and institutions of the country. He had a decisive impact on scholars. Guyana Yurkovich argues that led by Michelet, 19th century French historians no longer saw history as the chronicling of royal dynasties, armies, treaties, and great men of state, but as the history of ordinary French people and the landscape of France. Hippolyte Taine, 1828-1893, although unable to secure an academic position, was the chief theoretical influence of French naturalism, a major proponent of sociological positivism, and one of the first practitioners of historicist criticism. He pioneered the idea of the milieu as an active historical force which amalgamated geographical, psychological, and social factors. Historical writing for him was a search for general laws. His brilliant style kept his writing in circulation long after his theoretical approaches were passé. 
Topic: Cultural and constitutional history. One of the major progenitors of the history of culture and art, was the Swiss historian Jacob Burckhardt Siegfried Guillon described Burckhardt's achievement in the following terms, "...the great discoverer of the age of the Renaissance, he first showed how a period should be treated in its entirety, with regard not only for its painting, sculpture and architecture, but for the social institutions of its daily life as well." His most famous work was The Civilization of the Renaissance in Italy, published in 1860. It was the most influential interpretation of the Italian Renaissance in the 19th century and is still widely read. According to John Luckix, he was the first master of cultural history, which seeks to describe the spirit and the forms of expression of a particular age, a particular people, or a particular place. His innovative approach to historical research stressed the importance of art and its inestimable value as a primary source for the study of history. He was one of the first historians to rise above the narrow 19th century notion that history is past politics and politics current history. By the mid 19th century, scholars were beginning to analyze the history of institutional change, particularly the development of constitutional government. William Stubbs's Constitutional History of England three vols, 1874 was an important influence on this developing field. The work traced the development of the English constitution from the Teutonic invasions of Britain until 1485, and marked a distinct step in the advance of English historical learning. He argued that the theory of the unity and continuity of history should not remove distinctions between ancient and modern history. He believed that, the work on ancient history as a useful preparation for the study of modern history, either may advantageously be studied apart. He was a good paleographer, and excelled in textual criticism, in examination of authorship, and other such matters, while his vast erudition and retentive memory made him second to none in interpretation and exposition. Topic. Von Rank and professionalization in Germany The modern academic study of history and methods of historiography were pioneered in 19th-century German universities, especially the University of Göttingen. Leopold von Rank at Berlin was a pivotal influence in this regard, and was the founder of modern source-based history. According to Caroline Hoferl, Rank was probably the most important historian to shape historical profession as it emerged in Europe and the United States in the late 19th century. Specifically, he implemented the seminar teaching method in his classroom, and focused on archival research and analysis of historical documents. Beginning with his first book in 1824, The History of the Latin and Teutonic Peoples from 1494 to 1514, Rank used an unusually wide variety of sources for a historian of the age, including memoirs, diaries, personal and formal missives, government documents, diplomatic dispatches and first-hand accounts of eyewitnesses. Over a career that spanned much of the century, Rank set the standards for much of later historical writing, introducing such ideas as reliance on primary sources, an emphasis on narrative history and especially international politics Sources had to be solid, not speculations and rationalizations. His credo was to write history the way it was. He insisted on primary sources with proven authenticity. Rank also rejected the teleological approach to history, which traditionally viewed each period as inferior to the period which follows. In Rank's view, the historian had to understand a period on its own terms, and seek to find only the general ideas which animated every period of history. In 1831 and at the behest of the Prussian government, Rank founded and edited the first historical journal in the world, called Historisch-Politische Zeitschrift. Another important German thinker was Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, whose theory of historical progress ran counter to Rank's approach. In Hegel's own words, his philosophical theory of world history represents the development of the spirit's consciousness of its own freedom and of the consequent realization of this freedom. This realization is seen by studying the various cultures that have developed over the millennia, and trying to understand the way that freedom has worked itself out through them. World history is the record of the spirit's efforts to attain knowledge of what it is in itself. The Orientals do not know that the spirit or man as such are free in themselves. And because they do not know that, they are not themselves free. They only know that one is free. 
The consciousness of freedom first awoke among the Greeks, and they were accordingly free, but, like the Romans, they only knew that some, and not all men as such, are free. The Germanic nations, with the rise of Christianity, were the first to realize that all men are by nature free, and that freedom of spirit is his very essence. Karl Marx introduced the concept of historical materialism into the study of world historical development. In his conception, the economic conditions and dominant modes of production determined the structure of society at that point. In his view five successive stages in the development of material conditions would occur in Western Europe. The first stage was primitive communism where property was shared and there was no concept of leadership. This progressed to a slave society where the idea of class emerged and the state developed. Feudalism was characterized by an aristocracy working in partnership with a theocracy and the emergence of the nation-state. Capitalism appeared after the bourgeois revolution when the capitalists or their merchant predecessors overthrew the feudal system and established a market economy, with private property and parliamentary democracy. Marx then predicted the eventual proletarian revolution that would result in the attainment of socialism, followed by communism, where property would be communally owned. Previous historians had focused on cyclical events of the rise and decline of rulers and nations. Process of nationalization of history, as part of national revivals in the 19th century, resulted with separation of one's own history from common universal history by such way of perceiving, understanding and treating the past that constructed history as history of a nation. A new discipline, sociology, emerged in the late 19th century and analyzed and compared these perspectives on a larger scale. Topic. Macaulay and Whig history Thomas Macaulay produced his most famous work of history, The History of England from the Accession of James II, in 1848. His writings are famous for their ringing prose and for their confident, sometimes dogmatic, emphasis on a progressive model of British history, according to which the country threw off superstition, autocracy and confusion to create a balanced constitution and a forward-looking culture combined with freedom of belief and expression. This model of human progress has been called the Whig interpretation of history. His legacy continues to be controversial. Gertrude Himmelfarb wrote that most professional historians have long since given up reading Macaulay, as they have given up writing the kind of history he wrote and thinking about history as he did. However, J. R. Western wrote that, despite its age and blemishes, Macaulay's history of England has still to be superseded by a full scale modern history of the period. The term Whig history, coined by Herbert Butterfield in his short book The Whig Interpretation of History in 1931, means the approach to historiography which presents the past as an inevitable progression towards ever greater liberty and enlightenment, culminating in modern forms of liberal democracy and constitutional monarchy. In general, Whig historians emphasized the rise of constitutional government, personal freedoms and scientific progress. The term has been also applied widely in historical disciplines outside of British history the history of science, for example, to criticize any teleological or goal-directed, hero-based, and transhistorical narrative. Paul Rapin de Thoiris's History of England, published in 1723, became the classic Whig history for the first half of the 18th century. It was later supplanted by the immensely popular The History of England by David Hume. Whig historians emphasized the achievements of the Glorious Revolution of 1688. This included James Mackintosh's History of the Revolution in England in 1688, William Blackstone's Commentaries on the Laws of England and Henry Hallam's Constitutional History of England. The most famous exponent of Whiggery was Thomas Babington Macaulay, who published the first volumes of his The History of England from the accession of James II in 1848. It proved an immediate success and replaced Hume's history to become the new orthodoxy. His Whiggish convictions are spelled out in his first chapter. I shall relate how the new settlement was successfully defended against foreign and domestic enemies, how the authority of law and the security of property were found to be compatible with a liberty of discussion and of individual action never before known, how, from the auspicious union of order and freedom, sprang a prosperity of which the annals of human affairs had furnished no example, how our country, from a state of ignominious vassalage, rapidly rose to the place of umpire among European powers, how her opulence and her martial glory grew together. 
How a gigantic commerce gave birth to a maritime power, compared with which every other maritime power, ancient or modern, sinks into insignificance. The history of our country during the last 160 years is eminently the history of physical, of moral, and of intellectual improvement. This consensus was steadily undermined during the post-World War I re-evaluation of European history, and Butterfield's critique exemplified this trend. Intellectuals no longer believed the world was automatically getting better and better. Subsequent generations of academic historians have similarly rejected Whig history because of its presentist and teleological assumption that history is driving toward some sort of goal. Other criticized Whig assumptions included viewing the British system as the apex of human political development, assuming that political figures in the past held current political beliefs anachronism, considering British history as a march of progress with inevitable outcomes and presenting political figures of the past as heroes, who advanced the cause of this political progress, or villains, who sought to hinder its inevitable triumph. J. Hart says, A Whig interpretation requires human heroes and villains in the story. 20th century 20th century historiography in major countries is characterized by a move to universities and academic research centers. Popular history continued to be written by self-educated amateurs, but scholarly history increasingly became the province of fees trained in research seminars at a university. The training emphasized working with primary sources in archives. Seminars taught graduate students how to review the historiography of the topics, so that they could understand the conceptual frameworks currently in use, and the criticisms regarding their strengths and weaknesses. Western Europe and the United States took leading roles in this development. The emergence of area studies of other regions also developed historiographical practices. Topic. France, Analyse School The French Analyse School radically changed the focus of historical research in France during the 20th century by stressing long-term social history, rather than political or diplomatic themes. The school emphasized the use of quantification and the paying of special attention to geography. The Analyse de Histoire économique et sociale journal was founded in 1929 in Strasbourg by Marc Bloch and Lucien Febvre. These authors, the former a medieval historian and the latter an early modernist, quickly became associated with the distinctive analysis approach, which combined geography, history, and the sociological approaches of the Anne sociologique many members of which were their colleagues at Strasbourg to produce an approach which rejected the predominant emphasis on politics, diplomacy and war of many 19th and early 20th century historians as spearheaded by historians whom Febvre called Les Sorbonistes. Instead, they pioneered an approach to a study of long-term historical structures la longue durée over events and political transformations. Geography, material culture, and what later analystes called mentalites, or the psychology of the epoch, are also characteristic areas of study. The goal of the analysis was to undo the work of the Sorbonistes, to turn French historians away from the narrowly political and diplomatic toward the new vistas in social and economic history. For early modern Mexican history, the work of Marc Bloch's student François Chevalier on the formation of landed estates haciendas from the 16th century to the 17th had a major impact on Mexican history and historiography, setting off an important debate about whether landed estates were basically feudal or capitalistic. An eminent member of this school, Georges Duby, described his approach to history as one that relegated the sensational to the sidelines and was reluctant to give a simple accounting of events, but strived on the contrary to pose and solve problems and, neglecting surface disturbances, to observe the long and medium-term evolution of economy, society and civilization. The analystes, especially Lucien Febvre, advocated a histoire total, or histoire tout court, a complete study of a historical problem. The second era of the school was led by Fernand Braudel and was very influential throughout the 1960s and 1970s, especially for his work on the Mediterranean region in the era of Philip II of Spain. Braudel developed the idea, often associated with analistes, of different modes of historical time, la histoire quasi immobile motionless history of historical geography, the history of social, political and economic structures la longue durée, and the history of men and events, in the context of their structures. His long durée approach stressed slow, and often imperceptible effects of space, climate and technology on the actions of human beings in the past. 
The Annales historians, after living through two world wars and major political upheavals in France, were deeply uncomfortable with the notion that multiple ruptures and discontinuities created history. They preferred to stress slow change and the long durée. They paid special attention to geography, climate, and demography as long-term factors. They considered the continuities of the deepest structures were central to history, beside which upheavals in institutions or the superstructure of social life were of little significance, for history lies beyond the reach of conscious actors, especially the will of revolutionaries. Noting the political upheavals in Europe and especially in France in 1968, Eric Hobsbawm argued that in France the virtual hegemony of Braudelian history and the Annales came to an end after 1968, and the international influence of the journal dropped steeply." Multiple responses were attempted by the school. Scholars moved in multiple directions, covering in disconnected fashion the social, economic, and cultural history of different eras and different parts of the globe. By the time of crisis the school was building a vast publishing and research network reaching across France, Europe, and the rest of the world. Influence indeed spread out from Paris, but few new ideas came in. Much emphasis was given to quantitative data, seen as the key to unlocking all of social history. However, the analysis ignored the developments in quantitative studies underway in the US and Britain, which reshaped economic, political and demographic research. Topic. Marxist historiography Marxist historiography developed as a school of historiography influenced by the chief tenets of Marxism, including the centrality of social class and economic constraints in determining historical outcomes historical materialism. Friedrich Engels wrote The Peasant War in Germany, which analyzed social warfare in early Protestant Germany in terms of emerging capitalist classes. Although it lacked a rigorous engagement with archival sources, it indicated an early interest in history from below and class analysis, and it attempts a dialectical analysis. Another treatise of Engels, The Condition of the Working Class in England in 1844, was salient in creating the socialist impetus in British politics from then on, e.g. the Fabian Society. R. H. Taney was an early historian working in this tradition. The agrarian problem in the 16th century 1912 and religion and the rise of capitalism 1926, reflected his ethical concerns and preoccupations in economic history. He was profoundly interested in the issue of the enclosure of land in the English countryside in the 16th and 17th centuries and in Max Weber's thesis on the connection between the appearance of Protestantism and the rise of capitalism. His belief in the rise of the gentry in the century before the outbreak of the Civil War in England provoked the «storm over the gentry» in which his methods were subjected to severe criticisms by Hugh Trevor Roper and John Cooper. Historiography in the Soviet Union was greatly influenced by Marxist historiography, as historical materialism was extended into the Soviet version of dialectical materialism. A circle of historians inside the Communist Party of Great Britain CPGB formed in 1946 and became a highly influential cluster of British Marxist historians, who contributed to history from below and class structure in early capitalist society. While some members of the group most notably Christopher Hill and E. P. Thompson left the CPGB after the 1956 Hungarian Revolution, the common points of British Marxist historiography continued in their works. They placed a great emphasis on the subjective determination of history. Christopher Hill's studies on 17th-century English history were widely acknowledged and recognized as representative of this school. His books include Puritanism and Revolution 1958, Intellectual Origins of the English Revolution 1965 and revised in 1996, The Century of Revolution 1961, Antichrist in 17th Century England 1971, The World Turned Upside Down 1972 and many others. E. P. Thompson pioneered the study of history from below in his work, The Making of the English Working Class, published in 1963. It focused on the forgotten history of the first working-class political left in the world in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. In his preface to this book, Thompson set out his approach to writing history from below. I am seeking to rescue the poor stockinger, the Luddite cropper, the obsolete hand-loom weaver, the utopian artisan, and even the deluded follower of Joanna Southcott, from the enormous condescension of posterity. Their crafts and traditions may have been dying. Their hostility to the new industrialism may have been backward-looking. 
Their communitarian ideals may have been fantasies. Their insurrectionary conspiracies may have been foolhardy. But they lived through these times of acute social disturbance, and we did not. Their aspirations were valid in terms of their own experience, and, if they were casualties of history, they remain, condemned in their own lives, as casualties. Thompson's work was also significant because of the way he defined class. He argued that class was not a structure, but a relationship that changed over time. He opened the gates for a generation of labor historians, such as David Montgomery and Herbert Gutman, who made similar studies of the American working classes. Other important Marxist historians included Eric Hobbes Baum, C. L. R. James, Raphael Samuel, A. L. Morton and Brian Pierce. Although Marxist historiography made important contributions to the history of the working class, oppressed nationalities, and the methodology of history from below, its chief problematic aspect was its argument on the nature of history as determined or dialectical. This can also be stated as the relative importance of subjective and objective factors in creating outcomes. It increasingly fell out of favor in the 1960s and 70s. Jeffrey Elton was important in undermining the case for a Marxist historiography, which he argued was presenting seriously flawed interpretations of the past. In particular, Elton was opposed to the idea that the English Civil War was caused by socioeconomic changes in the 16th and 17th centuries, arguing instead that it was due largely to the incompetence of the Stuart Kings. In dealing with the era of the Second World War, Addison notes that in Britain by the 1990s, labor history was in sharp decline because there was no longer much interest in history of the white, male working class. Instead the cultural turn encouraged historians to explore wartime constructions of gender, race, citizenship and national identity. Biography Biography has been a major form of historiography since the days when Plutarch wrote the parallel lives of great Roman and Greek leaders. It is a field especially attractive to non-academic historians, and often to the spouses or children of famous people, who have access to the trove of letters and documents. Academic historians tend to downplay biography because it pays too little attention to broad social, cultural, political and economic forces, and perhaps too much attention to popular psychology. The great man Tradition in Britain originated in the multi-volume Dictionary of National Biography which originated in 1882 and issued updates into the 1970s, it continues to this day in the new Oxford Dictionary of National Biography. In the United States, the Dictionary of American Biography was planned in the late 1920s and appeared with numerous supplements into the 1980s. It has now been displaced by the American National Biography as well as numerous smaller historical encyclopedias that give thorough coverage to great persons. Bookstores do a thriving business in biographies, which sell far more copies than the esoteric monographs based on post-structuralism, cultural, racial or gender history. Michael Holroyd says the last 40 years may be seen as a golden age of biography, but nevertheless calls it the shallow end of history. Nicholas Barker argues that, "...more and more biographies command an ever larger readership," as he speculates that biography has come, "...to express the spirit of our age." Daniel R. Meister argues that, "...biography studies is emerging as an independent discipline, especially in the Netherlands. This Dutch school of biography is moving biography studies away from the less scholarly life-writing tradition and towards history by encouraging its practitioners to utilize an approach adapted from microhistory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> British debates. Marxist historian E. H. Carr developed a controversial theory of history in his 1961 book What is History, which proved to be one of the most influential books ever written on the subject. He presented a middle-of-the-road position between the empirical or Rankian view of history and R. G. Collingwood's idealism, and rejected the empirical view of the historian's work being an accretion of facts that he or she has at their disposal as nonsense. He maintained that there is such a vast quantity of information that the historian always chooses the facts he or she decides to make use of. In Carr's famous example, he claimed that millions had crossed the Rubicon, but only Julius Caesar's crossing in 49 BC is declared noteworthy by historians. For this reason, Carr argued that Leopold von Ranke's famous dictum We es eigenlicht gewesen was wrong because it presumed that the facts 
influenced what the historian wrote, rather than the historian choosing what facts of the past he or she intended to turn into historical facts. At the same time, Carr argued that the study of the facts may lead the historian to change his or her views. In this way, Carr argued that history was an unending dialogue between the past and present. Carr is held by some critics to have had a deterministic outlook in history. Others have modified or rejected this use of the label, determinist. He took a hostile view of those historians who stress the workings of chance and contingency in the workings of history. In Carr's view, no individual is truly free of the social environment in which they live, but contended that within those limitations, there was room, albeit very narrow room for people to make decisions that affect history. Carr emphatically contended that history was a social science, not an art, because historians like scientists seek generalizations that help to broaden the understanding of one subject. One of Carr's most forthright critics was Hugh Trevor Roper, who argued that Carr's dismissal of the might have bins of history reflected a fundamental lack of interest in examining historical causation. Trevor Roper asserted that examining possible alternative outcomes of history was far from being a parlor game was rather an essential part of the historian's work, as only by considering all possible outcomes of a given situation could a historian properly understand the period. The controversy inspired Sir Geoffrey Elton to write his 1967 book The Practice of History. Elton criticized Carr for his whimsical distinction between the historical facts and the facts of the past, arguing that it reflected less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 an extraordinarily arrogant attitude both to the past and to the place of the historian studying it elton instead strongly defended the traditional methods of history and was also appalled by the inroads made by postmodernism elton saw the duty of historians as empirically gathering evidence and objectively analyzing what the evidence has to say as a traditionalist, he placed great emphasis on the role of individuals in history instead of abstract, impersonal forces. Elton saw political history as the highest kind of history. Elton had no use for those who seek history to make myths, to create laws to explain the past, or to produce theories such as Marxism. U.S. <laughs> approaches Classical and European history was part of the 19th century grammar curriculum. American history became a topic later in the 19th century. In the historiography of the United States, there were a series of major approaches in the 20th century. In 2009 2012, there were an average of 16,000 new academic history books published in the U.S. every year. Topic. Progressive historians From 1910 to the 1940s, progressive historiography was dominant, especially in political studies. It stressed the central importance of class conflict in American history. Important leaders included Vernon L. Parrington, Carl L. Becker, Arthur M. Schlesinger Sr., John Hicks, and C. Van Woodward. The movement established a strong base at the History Department at the University of Wisconsin with Curtis Nettles, William Heseltine, Merle Curdy, Howard K. Beale, Merrill Jensen, Fred Harvey Harrington who became the university president, William Appleman Williams, and a host of graduate students. Charles A. Beard was the most prominent representative with his Beardian approach that reached both scholars and the general public in covering the civil war charles and mary beard did not find it useful to examine nationalism unionism states rights slavery abolition or the motivations of soldiers in battle instead they proclaimed it was a social cataclysm in which the capitalists laborers and farmers of the north and west drove from power in the national government the planting aristocracy of the south Viewed under the light of universal history, the fighting was a fleeting incident, the social revolution was the essential portentous outcome. The Second American Revolution, while destroying the economic foundation of the slave-owning aristocracy, assured the triumph of business enterprise. Arthur Schlesinger Jr. wrote The Age of Jackson 1945, one of the last major books from this viewpoint. Schlesinger made Jackson a hero for his successful attacks on the Second Bank of the United States. His own views were clear enough. 
Moved typically by personal and class, rarely by public, considerations, the business community has invariably brought national affairs to a state of crisis and exasperated the rest of society into dissatisfaction bordering on revolt. Topic. Consensus history Consensus history emphasizes the basic unity of American values and downplays conflict as superficial. It was especially attractive in the 1950s and 1960s. Prominent leaders included Richard Hofstadter, Louis Hartz, Daniel Burstyn, Alan Nevins, Clinton Rossiter, Edmund Morgan, and David M. Potter. In 1948 Hofstadter made a compelling statement of the consensus model of the U.S. Political tradition The fierceness of the political struggles has often been misleading, for the range of vision embraced by the primary contestants in the major parties has always been bounded by the horizons of property and enterprise. However much at odds on specific issues, the major political traditions have shared a belief in the rights of property, the philosophy of economic individualism, the value of competition, they have accepted the economic virtues capitalist culture as necessary qualities of man. Topic. New left history Consensus history was rejected by new left viewpoints that attracted a younger generation of radical historians in the 1960s. These viewpoints stress conflict and emphasize the central roles of class, race and gender. The history of dissent, and the experiences of racial minorities and disadvantaged classes was central to the narratives produced by new left historians. Topic. Quantification and new approaches to history Social history, sometimes called the new social history, is a broad branch that studies the experiences of ordinary people in the past. It had major growth as a field in the 1960s and 1970s, and still is well represented in history departments. However, after 1980 the cultural turn directed the next generation to new topics. In the two decades from 1975 to 1995, the proportion of professors of history in U.S. universities identifying with social history rose from 31% to 41%, while the proportion of political historians fell from 40% to 30%. The growth was enabled by the social sciences, computers, statistics, new data sources such as individual census information, and summer training programs at the Newberry Library and the University of Michigan. The new political history saw the application of social history methods to politics, as the focus shifted from politicians and legislation to voters and elections. The Social Science History Association was formed in 1976 as an interdisciplinary group with a journal Social Science History and an annual convention. The goal was to incorporate in historical studies perspectives from all the social sciences, especially political science, sociology, and economics. The pioneers shared a commitment to quantification. However, by the 1980s the first blush of quantification had worn off, as traditional historians counterattacked. Harvey J. Graff says, The case against the new mixed and confused a lengthy list of ingredients, including the following, history's supposed loss of identity and humanity in the stain of social science, the fear of subordinating quality to quantity, conceptual and technical fallacies, violation of the literary character and biographical base of good history rhetorical and aesthetic concern loss of audiences derogation of history rooted in great men and great events trivialization in general a hodgepodge of ideological objections from all directions and a fear that new historians were reaping research funds that might otherwise come to their detractors to defenders of history as they knew it the discipline was in crisis and the pursuit of the new was a major cause Meanwhile, quantitative history became well established in other disciplines, especially economics where they called it cliometrics, as well as in political science. In history, however, quantification remained central to demographic studies, but slipped behind in political and social history as traditional narrative approaches made a comeback. Topic. Latin America Latin America is the former Spanish-American empire in the Western Hemisphere plus Portuguese Brazil. Professional historians pioneered the creation of this field, starting in the late 19th century. The term Latin America did not come into general usage until the 20th century and in some cases it was rejected. 
The historiography of the field has been more fragmented than unified, with historians of Spanish America and Brazil generally remaining in separate spheres. Another standard division within the historiography is the temporal factor, with works falling into either the early modern period or colonial era or the post-independence or national period, from the early 19th onward. Relatively few works span the two eras and few works except textbooks unite Spanish America and Brazil. There is a tendency to focus on histories of particular countries or regions the Andes, the Southern Cone, the Caribbean with relatively little comparative work. Historians of Latin America have contributed to various types of historical writing, but one major, innovative development in Spanish American history is the emergence of ethnohistory, the history of indigenous peoples, especially in Mexico based on alphabetic sources in Spanish or in indigenous languages. For the early modern period, the emergence of Atlantic history, based on comparisons and linkages of Europe, the Americas, and Africa from 1450 to 1850 that developed as a field in its own right has integrated early modern. Latin American history into a larger framework. For all periods, global or world history have focused on the connections between areas, likewise integrating Latin America into a larger perspective. Latin America's importance to world history is notable but often overlooked. Latin America's central, and sometimes pioneering, role in the development of globalization and modernity did not cease with the end of colonial rule and the early modern period. Indeed, the region's political independence places it at the forefront of two trends that are regularly considered thresholds of the modern world. The first is the so-called liberal revolution, the shift from monarchies of the ancient regime, where inheritance legitimated political power, to constitutional republics. The second, and related, trend consistently considered a threshold of modern history that saw Latin America in the forefront as the development of nation states. Historical research appears in a number of specialized journals. These include Hispanic American Historical Review, Est, 1918, published by the Conference on Latin American History, The Americas, Est, 1944, Journal of Latin American Studies, 1969, Canadian Journal of Latin American and Caribbean Studies, S.1976, Bulletin of Latin American Research, Est. 1981, Colonial Latin American Review, 1992, and Colonial Latin American Historical Review, Est, 1992. Latin American Research Review est, 1969, published by the Latin American Studies Association, does not focus primarily on history, but it has often published historiographical essays on particular topics. General works on Latin American history have appeared since the 1950s, when the teaching of Latin American history expanded in U.S. universities and colleges. Most attempt full coverage of Spanish America and Brazil from the conquest to the modern era, focusing on institutional, political, social and economic history. An important, 11-volume treatment of Latin American history is the Cambridge History of Latin America, with separate volumes on the colonial era, 19th century, and the 20th century. There is a small number of general works that have gone through multiple editions. Major trade publishers have also issued edited volumes on Latin American history and historiography. Reference works include the Handbook of Latin American Studies, which publishes articles by area experts, with annotated bibliographic entries, and the Encyclopedia of Latin American History and Culture. Topic. World history World history, as a distinct field of historical study, emerged as an independent academic field in the 1980s. It focused on the examination of history from a global perspective and looked for common patterns that emerged across all cultures. The basic thematic approach of this field was to analyze two major focal points, integration how processes of world history have drawn people of the world together, and difference how patterns of world history reveal the diversity of the human experience. Arnold J. Toynbee's ten-volume A Study of History, took an approach that was widely discussed in the 1930s and 1940s. By the 1960s his work was virtually ignored by scholars and the general public. He compared 26 independent civilizations and argued that they displayed striking parallels in their origin, growth, and decay. He proposed a universal model to each of these civilizations, detailing the stages through which they all pass, genesis, growth, time of troubles, universal state, and disintegration. 
The later volumes gave too much emphasis on spirituality to satisfy critics. Chicago historian William H. McNeil wrote The Rise of the West 1965 to show how the separate civilizations of Eurasia interacted from the very beginning of their history, borrowing critical skills from one another, and thus precipitating still further change as adjustment between traditional old and borrowed new knowledge and practice became necessary. He then discusses the dramatic effect of Western civilization on others in the past 500 years of history. McNeil took a broad approach organized around the interactions of peoples across the globe. Such interactions have become both more numerous and more continual and substantial in recent times. Before about 1500, the network of communication between cultures was that of Eurasia. The term for these areas of interaction differ from one world historian to another and include world system and ecumene. His emphasis on cultural fusions influenced historical theory significantly. The cultural turn The cultural turn of the 1980s and 1990s affected scholars in most areas of history. Inspired largely by anthropology, it turned away from leaders, ordinary people and famous events to look at the use of language and cultural symbols to represent the changing values of society. The British historian Peter Burke finds that cultural studies has numerous spin-offs, or topical themes it has strongly influenced. The most important include gender studies and postcolonial studies, as well as memory studies, and film studies. Diplomatic historian Melvin P. Leffler finds that the problem with the cultural turn is that the culture concept is imprecise, and may produce excessively broad interpretations, because it seems infinitely malleable and capable of giving shape to totally divergent policies, for example, to internationalism or isolationism in the United States, and to cooperative internationalism or race hatred in Japan. The malleability of culture suggests to me that in order to understand its effect on policy, one needs also to study the dynamics of political economy, the evolution of the international system, and the roles of technology and communication, among many other variables. Topic. Memory studies Memory studies is a new field, focused on how nations and groups and historians construct and select their memories of the past in order to celebrate or denounce key features, thus making a statement of their current values and beliefs. Historians have played a central role in shaping the memories of the past as their work is diffused through popular history books and school textbooks. French sociologist Maurice Halbox opened the field with Le Mémoire Collective, Paris, 1950. Many historians examine the how the memory of the past has been constructed, memorialized, or distorted. Historians examine how legends are invented. For example, there are numerous studies of the memory of atrocities from World War II, notably the Holocaust in Europe and Japanese behavior in Asia. British historian Heather Jones argues that the historiography of the First World War in recent years has been reinvigorated by the cultural turn. Scholars have raised entirely new questions regarding military occupation, radicalization of politics, race, and the male body. Representative of recent scholarship is a collection of studies on the dynamics of memory and identity in contemporary Europe. Sage has published the scholarly journal Memory Studies since 2008, and the book series Memory Studies was launched by Palgrave Macmillan in 2010 with 5 to 10 titles a year. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Scholarly journals. The Historical Journal, a forum where academic historians could exchange ideas and publish newly discovered information, came into being in the 19th century. The early journals were similar to those for the physical sciences, and were seen as a means for history to become more professional. Journals also helped historians to establish various historiographical approaches, the most notable example of which was Annales, Economies, Societes, Civilizations, a publication of the Annales School in France. Journals now typically have one or more editors and associate editors, an editorial board, and a pool of scholars to whom articles that are submitted are sent for confidential evaluation. The editors will send out new books to recognized scholars for reviews that usually run 500 to 1,000 words. The vetting and publication process often takes months or longer. Publication in a prestigious journal which accept 10% or fewer of the articles submitted is an asset in the academic hiring and promotion process. Publication demonstrates that the author is conversant with the scholarly field. 
Page charges and fees for publication are uncommon in history. Journals are subsidized by universities or historical societies, scholarly associations, and subscription fees from libraries and scholars. Increasingly they are available through library pools that allow many academic institutions to pool subscriptions to online versions. Most libraries have a system for obtaining specific articles through inter-library loan. Topic Some major historical journals 1840 Historisk Tidskrift Denmark 1859 Historische Zeitschrift Germany 1866 Archivum Historicum, later Historialinnen Arkisto Finland, published in Finnish 1867 Shazadik Hungary 1869 Kasopis Matthijs Moravske Czech Republic, then part of Austria-Hungary 1871 Historisk Tidskrift Norway 1876 Review Historique France 1880 Historisk Tidskrift Sweden 1886 English Historical Review England 1887 Kortelnik Historyczny Poland then part of Austria Hungary 1892 William and Mary Quarterly US 1894 Ons Emicht Luxembourg 1895 American Historical Review US 1895 Seski Kasopis Historyczny Czech Republic then part of Austria Hungary 1914 Mississippi Valley Historical Review renamed in 1964 the Journal of American History US 1915 the Catholic Historical Review US 1916 The Journal of Negro History US 1916 Historisk Tidskrift for Finland Finland published in Swedish 1918 Hispanic American Historical Review US 1920 Canadian Historical Review Canada 1922 Slavonic and East European Review Seer England 1928 Scandia Sweden 1929 Analyse de Histoire Économique et Sociale France 1935 Journal of Southern History USA 1941 The Journal of Economic History US 1944 The Americas US 1951 Historia Mexicana Mexico 1952 Past and Present A Journal of Historical Studies England 1953 Virtelarschaft für Zeitgeschichte Germany 1954 Ethnohistory US 1956 Journal of the Historical Society of Nigeria Nigeria 1957 Victorian Studies US 1960 Journal of African History England 1960 Technology and Culture, the International Quarterly of the Society for the History of Technology U.S. 1960 History and Theory U.S. 1967 Indian Church History Review India earlier published as the Bulletin of Church History Association of India 1967 The Journal of Social History U.S. 1969 Journal of Interdisciplinary History U.S. 1969 Journal of Latin American Studies U.K. 1975 Geschichte und Gesellschaft Zeitschrift für Historische Sozialwissenschaft Germany 1975 Signs US 1976 Journal of Family History US 1978 The Public Historian US 1981 Bulletin of Latin American Research UK 1982 Storia della Storiografia History of Historiography Histoire de la Historiographie Geschichte der Geschichtsschreibung 1982 Subaltern Studies Oxford University Press 1986 Zeitschrift für Sozialgeschichte Day 20, und 21. Jarunderts, new title since 2003, Sozial, Geschichte, Zeitschrift für Historische Analyse Day 20, und 21. Jarunderts, Germany, 1990 Gender and History, US, 1990 Journal of World History, US, 1990 Lum. Zeitschrift für Feministische Geschichtswissenschaft, Austria. 1990 Österreichische Zeitschrift für Geschichtswissenschaften, Oz. 1992 Women's History Review 1992 Colonial Latin American Historical Review US 1992 Colonial Latin American Review 1996 Environmental History US Topic Narrative According to Lawrence Stone narrative has traditionally been the main rhetorical device used by historians in 1979, at a time when the new social history was demanding a social science model of analysis, Stone detected a move back toward the narrative. Stone defined narrative as follows, it is organized chronologically, it is focused on a single coherent story, it is descriptive rather than analytical, it is concerned with people not abstract circumstances, and it deals with the particular and specific rather than the collective and statistical. He reported that 
more and more of the new historians are now trying to discover what was going on inside people's heads in the past, and what it was like to live in the past, questions which inevitably lead back to the use of narrative. Historians committed to a social science approach, however, have criticized the narrowness of narrative and its preference for anecdote over analysis, and its use of clever examples rather than statistically verified empirical regularities. Topics studied Some of the common topics in historiography are Reliability of the sources used, in terms of authorship, credibility of the author, and the authenticity or corruption of the text. See also source criticism. Historiographical tradition or framework. Every historian uses one or more historiographical traditions, for example Marxist, analysis school, total history, or political history. Moral issues, guilt assignment, and praise assignment. Revisionism versus orthodox interpretations. Historical metanarratives and metahistory Approaches How a historian approaches historical events is one of the most important decisions within historiography. It is commonly recognized by historians that, in themselves, individual historical facts dealing with names, dates and places are not particularly meaningful. Such facts will only become useful when assembled with other historical evidence, and the process of assembling this evidence is understood as a particular historiographical approach. The most influential historiographical approaches are Business history Comparative history Cultural history Diplomatic history Economic history Environmental history, a relatively new field Ethnohistory Gender history including woman's history, family history, feminist history History of medicine History of religion and church history, the history of theology is usually handled under theology Intellectual history and history of ideas Labor history Local history and microhistory Marxist historiography and historical materialism Military history, including naval and air Oral history Political history Public history, especially museums and historic preservation Quantitative history, cliometrics in economic history, prosopography using statistics to study biographies History of religions Historiography of science Social history and history from below, along with the French version the Annales School and the German Bielefeld School Subaltern studies, regarding post-colonial India Urban history American urban history Whig history, history is the story of continuous progress World history Topic. Related fields Important related fields include Antiquarianism Genealogy Numismatics Intellectual history Paleography Philosophy of history Pseudohistory See also Historiography portal List of historians by area of study National memory Methods Archival research Auxiliary sciences of history Historical method List of historians, inclusive of most major historians List of historians by area of study List of history journals Philosophy of history Popular history Primary source, documents, correspondence, diaries Secondary source, interpretations, written history Tertiary source, textbooks and encyclopedias Public history, including museums and historical preservation Historical revisionism Shared historical authority Historiography at Wikiversity, where it is part of the School of History Topic. Topics Historiography of Argentina 
Atlantic history Historiography of Canada Chinese historiography Classics Greek historiography Historiography of Alexander the G. Read Roman historiography Historiography of the fall of the Western Roman Empire Historiography of the Cold War Historiography of the French Revolution Analysis School, in France Historiography of Germany Bielefeld School, in Germany History of India Hashtag Historiography Historiography of the fall of the Mughal Empire Historiography of early Islam Historiography of Japan Historiography of Korea Korean Nationalist Historiography Latin American History Middle Ages Historiography of early Christianity Historiography of Feudalism Dark Ages Historiography Historiography of the Crusades Historiography and Nationalism Historiography of Switzerland Historiography in the Soviet Union Historiography of the United States Frontier Thesis Historiography of the United Kingdom Historiography of Scotland Historiography of the British Empire World History Historiography of the Causes of World War I Historiography of World War II Historiography of the Battle of France, 1940 Topic References Topic Bibliography Topic Theory Appleby, Joyce, Lynn Hunt and Margaret Jacob, Telling the Truth About History. New York, W. W. Norton and Company, 1994. Bentley, Michael. Modern Historiography, An Introduction, 1999 ISBN 0-415-20267-1 Mark Block, The Historian's Craft, 1940 Burke, Peter. History and Social Theory, Polity Press, Oxford, 1992 David Canadine Editor, What is History Now? Palgrave Macmillan, 2002 E. H. Carr, What is History? 1961, ISBN 0-394-70391-XRG. Collingwood, The Idea of History, 1936, ISBN 0-19-285306-6 Doran, Robert, ed. Philosophy of History after Hayden White. London, Bloomsbury, 2013. Jeffrey Elton, The Practice of History, 1969, ISBN 0-631-22980-9 Richard J. Evans in Defense of History, 1997, ISBN 1-86207-104-7 Fisher, David Hackett. Historian's Fallacies, Towards a Logic of Historical Thought, Harper and Rowe, 1970 Gardiner, Juliet, ed. What is History Today? London, Macmillan Education Limited, 1988. Harlaftis, Galena, ed. The New Ways of History, Developments in Historiography I.B. Tories, 2010, 260 pp. Trends in Historiography Since 1990 Hewitson, Mark, History and Causality, Palgrave Macmillan, 2014 Jenkins, Keith ed. The Postmodern History Reader 2006 Jenkins, Keith. Rethinking History, 1991, ISBN 0-415-30443-1 Arthur Marwick, The New Nature of History, Knowledge, Evidence, Language, Basingstoke, Palgrave, 2001, ISBN 0-333-96447-0 Munslow, Allen. The Routledge Companion to Historical Studies 2000, An Encyclopedia of Concepts, Methods and Historians Spalding, Roger and Christopher Parker, Historiography, An Introduction, 2008, ISBN 0-7190-7285-9 Sridharan, E., A Textbook of Historiography, 500 BC to AD 2000. New Delhi, Orient Black Swan, 2004, ISBN 81-250-2657-6-1 Sridharan, E., A Manual of Historical Research Methodology. Trivandrum, Center for South Indian Studies, 2007, ISBN 978-81-905928-0-2-2 Tosh, John. The Pursuit of History, 2002, ISBN 0-582-77254-0 Tucker, Avizer, ed. A Companion to the Philosophy of History and Historiography Malden, Blackwell, 2009 White, Hayden. The Fiction of Narrative, Essays on History, Literature, and Theory, 1957-2007, Johns Hopkins, 2010. Ed. Robert Doran Topic Guides to Scholarship The American Historical Association's Guide to Historical Literature, ed., by Mary Beth Norton and Pamela Girardi 3rd ed. 2 volume, Oxford UP 1995, 2064 pages, annotated guide to 27,000 of the most important English language history books in all fields and topics Volume 1 online, Volume 2 online Allison, William Henry et al., eds. 
A Guide to Historical Literature 1931 Comprehensive Bibliography for Scholarship to 1930 as selected by scholars from the American Historical Association Online Edition, Free, Backhouse, Roger E. and Philippe Fontaine, eds. A Historiography of the Modern Social Sciences Cambridge University Press, 2014 pp. x. 248, Essays on the Ways in Which the Histories of Psychology, Anthropology, Sociology, Economics, History, and Political Science have been written since 1945 Black, Jeremy. Cleo's Battles, Historiography in Practice Indiana University Press, 2015, XVI, 323 pp. Boyd, Kelly, ed. Encyclopedia of Historians and Historical Writers 2 volume 1999, 1600 pp covering major historians and themes Klein, Howard F. ed. Guide to Ethnohistorical Sources, Handbook of Middle American Indians 4 vols U of Texas Press 1973. Gray, Wood. Historian's Handbook, 2nd ed., Houghton Mifflin Co., Cop. 1964, v. 88 pp, A Primer Elton, G.R. Modern Historians on British History 1485-1945, A Critical Bibliography 1945-1969 Annotated Guide to 1000 History Books on Every Major Topic, Plus Book Reviews and Major Scholarly Articles, Online Loads, David, ed. Reader's Guide to British History Routledge, 2 Vol. 2003 1760 pp, Highly Detailed Guide to British Historiography Excerpt and Text Search Parish, Peter, ed. Reader's Guide to American History Routledge, 1997, 880 pp, Detailed Guide to Historiography of American Topics Excerpt and Text Search Popkin, Jeremy D. From Herodotus to H. Net, The Story of Historiography Oxford Up, 2015. Wolf, Daniel, et al. The Oxford History of Historical Writing, 5 Vol. 2011-R12, covers all major historians since AD 600, see listings The Oxford History of Historical Writing, Vol. 1, Beginnings to AD 600 online at doi, 10.1093, ACPROF, OSOBL, 9780199218250, The Oxford History of Historical Writing Writing, Volume 3 to 1400 minus 1800 online at DOI 10.1093 ACPROF OSOBL 9780199219250. The Oxford History of Historical Writing, Volume 4 to 1800 minus 1945 online at DOI 10.1093 ACPROF OSOBL BL, 9780199533000 The Histories of Historical Writing Barnes, Harry Elmer. A History of Historical Writing Baraclough, Jeffrey. History, Main Trends of Research in the Social and Human Sciences, 1978 Bentley, Michael, ed., Companion to Historiography, Routledge, 1997, ISBN 0415285577, 39 chapters by experts Boyd, Kelly, ed. Encyclopedia of Historians and Historical Writing 2 volume Taylor and Francis, 1999, 1562 pp Brysock, Ernst. Historiography, Ancient, Medieval and Modern, 3rd edition, 2007, ISBN 0-226-07278-9 Bud, Adam, ed. The Modern Historiography Reader, Western Sources, Routledge, 2009. Klein, Howard F., ed., Latin American History, Essays on Its Study and Teaching, 1898-1965, 2 vols. Austin, University of Texas Press 1965. Cohen, H. Floris The Scientific Revolution, A Historiographical Inquiry, 1994, ISBN 0-226-11280-2 Conrad, Sebastian. The Quest for the Lost Nation, Writing History in Germany and Japan in the American Century 2010. Fitzsimmons, M. A. et al., eds. The Development of Historiography 1954-471 Pages, Comprehensive Global Coverage, Online Free, Gilderhus, Mark T. History and Historiographical Introduction, 2002, ISBN 0-13-044824-9 
Igers, Georg G. Historiography in the 20th Century, From Scientific Objectivity to the Postmodern Challenge 2005. Kramer, Lloyd, and Sarah Mazza, eds. A Companion to Western Historical Thought Blackwell 2006. 520 pp, ISBN 978-1-4051-4961-7. Momigliano, Arnaldo. The Classical Foundation of Modern Historiography, 1990, ISBN 978-0-226-07283-8 The Oxford History of Historical Writing 5 Vol. 2011, Vol. 1, Beginnings to AD 600, Vol. 2-600-1400, Vol. 3-1400-1800, Vol. 4-1800-1945, Vol. 5, Historical Writing Since 1945 Catalogue Rahman, M. M. Ed. Encyclopedia of Historiography 2006 excerpt and text search Soffer, Reba. History, Historians, and Conservatism in Britain and America, From the Great War to Thatcher and Reagan 2009 excerpt and text search Thompson, James Westfall. A History of Historical Writing, Volume 1, From the Earliest Times to the End of the Seventeenth Century 1942 online edition, A History of Historical Writing, Volume 2, The Eighteenth and Nineteenth Centuries 1942 online edition Wolf, Daniel, ed. A Global Encyclopedia of Historical Writing 2 volume 1998 Wolf, Daniel. Historiography. In New Dictionary of the History of Ideas, ed. M. C. Horowitz, 2005, Volume 1. Wolf, Daniel. A Global History of History, Cambridge University Press, 2011. Wolf, Daniel, ed. The Oxford History of Historical Writing. Five Vols, Oxford University Press, 2011-12. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Feminist Historiography. Bonnie G. Smith, The Gender of History, Men, Women, and Historical Practice, Harvard University Press 2000 Goethe Lerner, The Majority Finds Its Past, Placing Women in History, New York, Oxford University Press 1979 Judith M. Bennett, History Matters, Patriarchy and the Challenge of Feminism, University of Pennsylvania Press, 2006 Julie Day Jardins, Women and the Historical Enterprise in America, University of North Carolina Press, 2002 Donna Guy, Gender and Sexuality in Latin America, in the Oxford Handbook of Latin American History, Jose C. Moya, ed. New York, Oxford University Press 2011, pp. 367-81. Asuncion Lavrin, Sexuality in Colonial Spanish America. In the Oxford Handbook of Latin American History, Jose C. Moya, ed. New York, Oxford University Press 2011, pp. 132-54. Mary Ritter Beard, Woman as Force in History, A Study in Traditions and Realities Mary Spongberg, Writing Women's History Since the Renaissance, Palgrave Macmillan, 2002 Claire Hemings, Why Stories Matter, The Political Grammar of Feminist Theory, Duke University Press 2011 Topic National and Regional Studies Berger, Stefan et al., eds. Writing National Histories, Western Europe Since 1800 1999 excerpt and text search, How History Has Been Used in Germany, France and Italy to Legitimize the Nation State Against Socialist, Communist and Catholic Internationalism Igers, Georg G. A. New Directions and European Historiography 1975 Le Capra, Dominic, and Stephen L. Kaplan, eds. Modern European Intellectual History, Reappraisals and New Perspective 1982, topic United States Hofstadter, Richard. The Progressive Historians, Turner, Beard, Parrington 1968, Novick, Peter. That Noble Dream, The Objectivity Question and the American Historical Profession 1988, ISBN 0-521-34328-3 Palmer, William W. All Coherence Gone? A Cultural History of Leading History Departments in the United States, 1970-2010, Journal of the Historical Society, 2012, 12-111-53. doi, 10.1111, j.1540-5923.20 12360 X Palmer, William. 
Engagement with the Past, The Lives and Works of the World War II Generation of Historians 2001, Parrish, Peter J., ed. Reader's Guide to American History 1997, Historiographical Overview of 600 Topics Wish, Harvey. The American Historian 1960, covers pre-1920 topic Britain Ban, Stephen. Romanticism and the Rise of History Twain Publishers, 1995 Bentley, Michael. Modernizing England's Past, English Historiography in the Age of Modernism, 1870-1970 Excerpt and Text Search Canadine, David. In Churchill's Shadow, Confronting the Past in Modern Britain 2003, Ferber, Elizabeth, ed. Changing Views on British History, Essays on Historical Writing Since 1939 1966, 418 pp. Essays by scholars Goldstein, Doris S. The Origins and Early Years of the English Historical Review, English Historical Review 1986-101 No. 398 pp. 6-19. Goldstein, Doris S. The Organizational Development of the British Historical Profession, 1884–1921, Historical Research 1982-55 No. 132 pp. 180–93. Hale, John Rigby, ed. The Evolution of British Historiography, From Bacon to Namie, 1967. Housam, Leslie. Academic Discipline or Literary Genre, The Establishment of Boundaries in Historical Writing, Victorian Literature and Culture 2004-32 No. 2 pp. 525-45, online Hexter, J. H. on Historians, Reappraisals of Some of the Makers of Modern History 1979, covers Carl Becker, Wallace Ferguson, Fernan Browdle, Lawrence Stone, Christopher Hill, and J. G. A. Pocock Housam, Leslie. Academic Discipline or Literary Genre, The Establishment of Boundaries in Historical Writing. Victorian Literature and Culture 32.02 525-545, online Jan, Rosemary. The Art and Science of Victorian History 1985. Jan, Rosemary. From Amateur to Professional, The Case of the Oxbridge Historians. Journal of British Studies 1983-22 No. 2 pp. 122-47. Kenyon, John. The History Men, The Historical Profession in England Since the Renaissance 1983. Lodes, David. Reader's Guide to British History 2 Vol. 2003 1700 pp. 1600 word long historiographical essays on about 1000 topics. Mitchell, Rosemary, Picturing the Past, English History in Text and Image 1830-1870 Oxford, Clarendon Press, 2000 Phillips, Mark Salber. Society and Sentiment, Genres of Historical Writing in Britain, 1740-1820 Princeton University Press, 2000 Richardson, Roger Charles, ed. The Debate on the English Revolution, 2nd ed. Manchester University Press, 1998 Schlatter, Richard, ed. Recent Views on British History, Essays on Historical Writing Since 1966-1984-525 pp. 13 Topics Essays by Scholars Topic. British Empire Berger, Carl. Writing Canadian History, Aspects of English Canadian Historical Writing Since 1900, 2nd ed., 1986 Bhattacharji, J. B. Historians and Historiography of North East India 2012. Davison, Graham. The Use and Abuse of Australian History, 2000 online edition Farrell, Frank. Themes in Australian History, Questions, Issues and Interpretation in an Evolving Historiography 1990. Gare, Deborah. Britishness in Recent Australian Historiography. The Historical Journal, Vol. 43, No. 4 Dec. 2000, pp. 1145-1155 in JSTOR Guha, Ranahiyat. Dominance Without Hegemony, History and Power in Colonial India Harvard Up, 1998 Granitstein, J. L. Who Killed Canadian History, 2000 Middle, S. C. India Distorted, A Study of British Historians on India 1995, on 19th-century writers Saunders, Christopher. The Making of the South African Past, Major Historians on Race and Class, 1988 Winks, Robin, ed. 
The Oxford History of the British Empire, Volume 5, Historiography, 2001. Topic: <laughs> Latin America. Adelman, Jeremy, ed. Colonial Legacies. New York, Routledge 1999. Coatsworth, John. Cliometrics and Mexican History. Historical Methods 18 to 1, Winter 1985, 31 to 37. Gutenberg, Paul. Between a Rock and a Softer Place – Reflections on Some Recent Economic History of Latin America. Latin American Research Review 39-22004-239-57. Kazensoff and Robert Oppenheimer. The Family and Society in Nineteenth-Century Latin America – An Historiographical Introduction. Journal of Family History 10-3 1985, 215-34. Lockhart, James. The Social History of Early Latin America. Latin American Research Review 1972. Moya, Jose C. The Oxford Handbook of Latin American History. New York, Oxford University Press 2011. Russell Wood, A. J. R. Archives and the Recent Historiography on Colonial Brazil, Latin American Research Review 36-12001-75-103. The New Cultural History Comes to Old Mexico. The Hispanic American Historical Review, 79-2 Topic Asia and Africa Cohen, Paul. Discovering History in China, American Historical Writing on the Recent Chinese Past. New York, London, Columbia University Press, Studies of the East Asian Institute, 1984. 237p. Reprinted, 2010, with a new introduction by the author. ISBN 0231525466X. 3. R. C. Majumdar, Historiography in Modem India, Bombay, 1970. ISBN 9782102227356. Merchinkovsky, M. Ismail. Persian Historiography and Geography, Bertold Spuler on Major Works Produced in Iran, the Caucasus, Central Asia, India and Early Ottoman Turkey Singapore, Pustaka Nasional, 2003 Martin, Thomas R. Herodotus and Sima Qian, The First Great Historians of Greece and China, A Brief History with Documents 2009 E. Sridharan, A Textbook of Historiography, 500 BC to AD 2000 2004 Arvind Sharma, Hinduism and Its Sense of History Oxford University Press, 2003. ISBN 978-0-19-566531-4 Shori, Arun 2014. Eminent Historians, Their Technology, Their Line, Their Fraud. Noida, Uttar Pradesh, India, HarperCollins Publishers. ISBN 9789351365914 Yerksa, Donald A. Recent Themes in the History of Africa and the Atlantic World, Historians in Conversation 2008 excerpt and text search topic France Burke, Peter. The French Historical Revolution, The Annales School 1929-2014 John Wiley & Sons, 2015. Clark, Stewart. French Historians and Early Modern Popular Culture, Past and Present 100 62-99. Dileader, Philip and Philip Whalen, eds. French Historians 1900-2000, New Historical Writing in 20th Century France 2010-40 Long Essays by Experts, Excerpt Revel, Jacques, and Lynn Hunt, eds. Histories, French Constructions of the Past, 1995, 654 pp, 65 essays by French historian Stoyanovich, Tryon. French Historical Method, The Annales Paradigm, 1976 Topic Germany Fletcher, Roger. Recent Developments in West German Historiography, The Bielefeld School and Its Critics, German Studies Review, 1984, 451-480, in JSTOR Hageman, Karen, and Jean H. Quadert, eds. Gendering Modern German History, Rewriting Historiography 2008, Igers, Georg G. The German Conception of History, The National Tradition of Historical Thought from Herder to the Present 2nd ed. 1983, Ruger, Jan, and Nikolaus Waxman, eds. Rewriting German History, New Perspectives on Modern Germany Palgrave Macmillan, 2015, excerpt Sheehan, James J. What is German History? 
Reflections on the Role of the Nation in German History and Historiography, Journal of Modern History 1981, 2-23. In JSTOR Sperber, Jonathan. Master Narratives of Nineteenth-Century German History. Central European History 1991-24 No. 1-69-91, online Stuckty, Benedict, and Peter Wendy, eds. British and German Historiography, 1750–1950, Traditions, Perceptions, and Transfers 2000. Topic. Themes, Organizations, and Teaching Karl Bach, Elisheva, et al., eds. Jewish History and Jewish Memory, Essays in Honor of Yosef Chaim Yerushalmi 1998 excerpt and text search Charlton, Thomas L. History of Oral History, Foundations and Methodology 2007. Darcy, R. and Richard C. Roars, A Guide to Quantitative History 1995. Davidovich, Lucy S. The Holocaust and Historians, 1981. Ernest, John. Liberation Historiography, African American Writers and the Challenge of History, 1794-1861, 2004 Evans, Ronald W. The Hope for American School Reform, The Cold War Pursuit of Inquiry Learning in Social Studies Palgrave Macmillan, 2011, 265 pages Farrow, Mark, Cinema and History, 1988 Hudson, Pat. History by Numbers, An Introduction to Quantitative Approaches 2002. Kata, Magan. Race and the Writing of History. Oxford UP 2000. Levy, Patricia. Oral History, Understanding Qualitative Research 2011 excerpt and text search Lawin, James W. Lies My Teacher Told Me, Everything Your American History Textbook Got Wrong, 1996 Manning, Patrick, ed. World History, Global and Local Interactions 2006. Meister, Daniel R. The Biographical Turn and the Case for Historical Biography. History Compass, December 2017 doi, 10.1111, HIC 3.12436 Abstract Morris Suzuki, Tessa. The Past Within Us, Media, Memory, History 2005, ISBN 1-85984-513-4 Ritchie, Donald A. The Oxford Handbook of Oral History 2010 excerpt and text search topic Journals Chromos, Cyber Review of Modern Historiography History and Theory History of Historiography topic External links BBC Historiography Guide International Commission for the History and Theory of Historiography Philosophy of History introduced at the Galilean Library Postcolonial Historiographies Group at Cambridge University, includes online reading and video archive scientific historiography, explained in an interview with Aviso Tucker at the Galilean Library series of accessible, interactive online lectures summary of key historiographical schools web portal on historiography and historical culture.